Senator, thanks for joining us. We've just learned thanks, that committee chairman Dianne Feinstein will launch an investigation of security clearances. What exactly are you focused on the most uh, in looking at this potential problem? Well, I'm very glad that uh, Dianne Feinstein is going to launch this hearing. I serve on the Homeland Security and Government Oversight Committee. I believe that we should have a hearing that looks at the prior incidents. This man had uh, prior incidents of misconduct, uh, prior interactions with the criminal justice system, obviously law enforcement, uh, not only in Seattle, but in Texas. And then in August, he had this interaction with the Rhode Island police where the Rhode Island police contacted the Navy saying he was hearing voices uh, demonstrating obviously bizarre mental health behavior, deep concerns. And then again, when he was discharged from the Navy, uh, what we have as information is that they wanted to seek a general discharge, but ended up seeking an honorable discharge. The issue is one of uh, safety in terms of the security clearances for individuals who are contractors that come in sensitive areas like the Navy Yard and other facilities across our country. We need a thorough review to make sure uh, that people aren't getting through that should not be receiving these kinds of security clearances. Now, I remember earlier this year you were pushing bipartisan legislation on strengthening mental health coverage uh, in this country. What happened to that bill? And theoretically, what could that do to prevent future horrors like this one? Well, Jake, I think there's a lot of bipartisan support right now in the Senate. I have a bill with Mark Begich. Today we called uh, Harry Reid and asked him to, we, we basically issued a release asking Harry to bring that up. Got over 90 votes in the Senate. Our, our bill would deal with uh, making sure that we detect signs of mental illness at an early stage. And then we need, uh, there are other bills that deal with how do we deal with intervention, training for law enforcement and making sure that we see the signs early on and get treatment for individuals who are mentally ill before they commit these kinds of acts. And I think there's a lot of support across uh, party lines on this that we can get some legislation done to address these troubling issues. But if it passed so overwhelmingly in the Senate, it just never was taken up by the House? Uh, well, it didn't fully pass. It was uh, part of the legislation, obviously, on the gun control issues. But it hasn't been introduced as its own standalone legislation, so it died with that piece of legislation. But I actually think it could be taken up separately and easily passed because most of the mental health provisions got over 90 votes in the Senate, and very little gets 90 votes around here, Jake. I want to ask you, just as you're a mother of young children, I'm, I'm a father of young children, when you hear that something like this happens, even if he had not been able to get into the Navy Yard, this person, this killer, might have taken his frustrations out in his, in, in his way uh, somewhere else, on some other innocent people. So putting the security issue and the clearance issue aside for a second, when you hear that he was hearing voices, that he shot out tires of a car and said he had a blackout, how can we keep guns out of the hands of people like that? Well, Jake, I think we're all deeply saddened by what happened here. And uh, absolutely, I think one of the things we have to do is uh, this issue, he didn't have a criminal record uh, that would have prevented him from having a firearm, but the issue is really early intervention for mental health issues and making sure uh, that individuals who have these types of mental illnesses, that we detect them early and get them the treatment that they need rather than have them in these types of situations. I think that's why this legislation that I talked about earlier, where there is strong bipartisan support for it. You know, let's move on that now. I want to ask you about one other issue. We're 12 days away from a potential government shutdown and about a month away from yet another fiscal cliff. Today, Speaker John Boehner said House Republicans would do everything they could to repeal Obamacare. Take a listen. This week, uh, the House will pass a CR that uh, uh, that locks the sequester savings in and defunds uh, Obamacare. Uh, the law is a train wreck. The law is what the law is, but it is the law, and it did pass the House and the Senate. President Obama and the Senate, you're a member of, are never going to defund Obamacare. Is the House on a fool's errand here? Is this just going to start a government shutdown that your party's going to take the heat for, for no reason at all? Well, Jake, let me just say that, you know, I've heard so much concern about Obamacare, and I've supported repealing it. Uh, that's one of the reasons I ran for the United States Senate, uh, as you know, in 2010. 
But I don't think that shutting down the government is going to be productive. We have to remember that in the, in the, right now, and we only have a third of the government as Republicans. And so I think we should make every effort we can to make sure that we stop this law. But I don't believe we should shut down the government to do so. And I don't think that's a strategy that is good for America.